I'm Leslie Collum, Voter Service Chair of the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. On behalf of the League, I am pleased to welcome you to this candidate forum sponsored by the League in partnership with Rutherford County TV. We appreciate the support from Rutherford County government provided by Brian Robertson, CIO at the Office of Information Technology, and Lee Harris at RCTV. They and their staff enable broadcasting and streaming of our forums to reach a large number of voters. The League seeks to conduct our forums in a nonpartisan manner. The participants, especially the moderator, are not publicly aligned with any particular candidate. The League believes that candidate forums, which are broadcast live and recorded for later viewing on TV or the web, provide an excellent opportunity for voters to become more familiar with the candidates and their position. If you agree with us, please express your opinion about the value of televised and web-streamed candidate forums to the individual seeking your vote. In the upcoming general election, you will be voting for important positions in the Tennessee General Assembly. The League reached out to all candidates in House Districts 34, 37, 48, and 49, and Senate District 13, and provided two possible dates for the forums. Only one candidate in each of the House of Representatives races agreed to participate in the forum. In order to ensure impartiality and comply with FCC rules for televised events, a majority of candidates must agree to participate in order for the League to go forward with a forum. We therefore are not able to offer forums for any of the House seats. In the Senate District 13 race, two candidates agreed to participate in the forum, and you will hear from those candidates tonight. The third candidate for State Senate did not respond to emails or telephone calls from the League. Early voting starts October 17th and runs through November 1st. In a process that's new this year and implemented by the Rutherford County Election Commission to increase voter convenience on Election Day itself, that's November 6th, you will be able to vote at any one of the voting centers located throughout Rutherford County. To learn which voting location will be best for you on Election Day, visit the Rutherford County Election Commission at www.ruco.vote. We thank you for your attention as you hear these candidates introduce themselves and answer questions about pertinent issues facing the state of Tennessee. We hope you find this forum useful in deciding which candidate you choose to support. Remember, your vote gives you a prime opportunity to influence how government is conducted in the state of Tennessee. Please make your decision known by voting. And remember, your vote counts. When both candidates have completed the opening statement, then several questions will be asked. The candidates will respond to each of those questions with a one minute answer. The candidates will be allowed two minutes to answer the last question and to make any closing remarks. I want to thank each of the candidates for their gracious acceptance of our invitation to participate in this event. Speaking first is Kelly Northcutt. Uh, Ms. Northcutt, you may make your opening statement. You, have, you will have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you for hosting this forum and thank you all for listening. Uh, I am Kelly Northcutt and I want to be your next state senator. I've lived in Middle Tennessee for over 40 years, in Rutherford County for over 20 years. I still live in the same small house I moved into to raise my children after falling in love with our older neighborhood and its diversity and old beautiful trees. <laughs> um, I'm a first generation college graduate and a strong supporter of pu the public school system. 
Uh, two of my children are currently attending my alma mater, MTSU. Uh, I'm a first time candidate. I'm running for state senate because I think you deserve a senator who cares about what you care about and will work for you no matter who you are, what you look like, or where you live. I understand the importance of a good paying job, access to health care, and a quality education. I've seen our state legislature spend too much time fighting about things that don't improve the quality of life of the people who live here. As a single mother and former small business owner, I understand how jobs, health care, and education can change someone's life. We need to bring collaboration back into politics. We need to work together in order to move forward. And I plan to work hard for the people of this district. As your next senator, I want to focus on things that matter to families in District 13. We can build a future for Tennessee where everyone's voice is heard and where we work together to make this a better place to live, learn, and work. I'm Kelly Northcutt, and I'm asking for your vote to be your next state senator. Thank you. Speaking second is Ginger Smith. Uh, Ms. Smith, you may make your opening statement. You will have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for listening. My name is Ginger Smith and I am pleased to announce that I am running for state senator for District 13. I'd like to acknowledge Kelly North Northcutt and um, um, I want to be the senator for this district because I want to serve the people of this district. As such, uh, I, I promise, or it is my hope, that I will be able to uh, meet with the people from this district and take phone calls and be accessible to people um, and uh, to serve the people of this district to the best of my ability. Uh, and I, I want to say that um, uh, choosing a, a senator uh, should be about choosing the best person for, for the office. And uh, I'm uh, an attorney by profession, so I'm licensed in uh, three different states, Missouri, Illinois, and Tennessee. Uh, and, and so I believe that my law background will um, be an asset to me uh, as, as we um, uh, examine the laws of, of, of this state and, and try to do what's best for people. And I will be accountable to the people. I will serve the people. And um, uh, um, I believe that the people uh, from Smyrna, Murfreesboro, and um, uh, uh, Laverne are ready for a new type of candidate, someone that's going to look out for their interests. And I, I have compassion for people. I'm a former public defender, and I believe that I've been equipped to handle this job. Thank you. Thank you for your vote. Uh, we will now turn to our questions. Uh, the first question will be answered first by Ms. Smith. Uh, you will have one minute to answer this question. Uh, if elected, what are the top one or two things you would like to accomplish during your term in office? Okay, yes, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I too, uh, am interested in, in education, uh, like Ms. Northcutt. And, and so I would like to see improvements in the, with, within the school system. Specifically, I, I would like to see um, some of the math courses bumped up. Uh, for example, I'd like to see like pre-calculus uh, or pre-algebra and algebra. I'd like to see those introduced uh, earlier in, uh, in, the, in the academic uh, uh, term of, of, of a student. Uh, so that, that is one thing that I'm interested in. Um, I'm, I'm also interested in, and, and this is this is kind of personal, but I would like to see us uh, take, uh, for example, parents who are driving and smoking um, 
with kids in the car, I'd like to see us try to do something about that. Thank you. Ms. Northcutt, if elected, what are the top one or two things you would like to accomplish during your term in office? My number one priority in office is undoubtedly will be health care access. Um, we have sent about $4.2 billion of Tennessee tax dollars to other states, and we're getting nothing in return for that. Three out of five people in Tennessee live 45 minutes or more from an emergency room. This is unconscionable. Think about the impact of those 45 minutes when it's your son on a stretcher at a football game or when it's your mother who's had a heart attack or your wife in labor. This is a problem we can solve that makes our lives better, that will save lives, and that will be my very top priority. Question, uh, Ms. Northcutt will go first. Right. Um, what are the central challenges that the state of Tennessee faces in aligning tax revenues with expenditures, and what would you do to ensure that alignment? Ensure that alignment. Um, <clears throat> well, we have a we have a set amount that is discretionary. Uh, there is a certain amount of our budget that is required to go for roads and schools. Um, so what sets our budget is our priorities. Once those priorities are clear that it's jobs, education, and health care, then we, we decide from our discretionary income how how best to spend that money. Um, I have a lot of experience at making making a little money stretch a long way as a single mother. <laughs> and I think that uh, that'll go far in helping to decide how we best stretch our tax dollars to cover the things that will improve the lives of the people in this district. Uh, Ms. Smith, uh, what are the central challenges that the state of Tennessee faces in aligning tax revenues with expenditures, and what would you do to ensure that alignment? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I, tend, I tend to agree with Ms. Norcutt. Um, I would like to see um, us work towards keeping uh, taxes as low as possible and not necessarily, I hate to say it this way, but nickel and diming people, uh, since we don't have a state uh, income tax, but nickeling, uh, nickeling and diming people in other ways to, to get money when we could, you know, maybe just cut the budget a little bit. But um, uh, and, and when I say nickel and diming, I mean like the uh, gas tax, the food taxes, all these things kind of, they, they add up. And so I think if we can just make some cuts uh, and um, uh, then we, we should be able to, you know, maybe reduce that gas tax and re reduce the food tax because I think the food taxes and the gas taxes are going to impact lower income families uh, more so than anyone else. Thank you. Question first. Um, how should the state of Tennessee address its role in health care related issues like Medicaid expansion? Okay, so yeah, I believe that we do need uh, health care for everyone. I believe that everyone, uh, this is a, you know, a progressive country uh, and I believe that we all need health care. Uh, so, as, as far as if, if I'm elected, if I'm if I'm elected, I would vote for uh, health care services uh, to to for everyone for for the poor, and and so uh, to that end, I would I, I support health care. I'm a big proponent for that. <clears throat> Uh, how should the state of Tennessee address its role in health care related issues like Medicaid expansion? By uh, expanding Medicaid, passing uh, Governor Haslam's proposed Insure Tennessee, um, we are, like I stated earlier, we are already sending tax money 
to other states and we're not getting anything in return. We're not getting insured people nor any money into our, uh, into our hospitals. I think 11 hospitals have closed across the state of Tennessee and that's because we failed to pass Medicaid expansion. It's a, it's a zero balance game. We're already paying that money and I think we need to pass it in order to ensure that people have access to health care and it's not costing people's lives. Um, and Ms. Northcutt will have this question first. Um, what do you see as the role of state government in meeting the needs of the increasingly diverse population of the state of Tennessee? Um, I see the role of the state government in meeting uh, the needs of a diverse population as uh, making sure that we have access to uh, a good quality public education system, um, a good health care system, and good paying jobs. I think that th that's the same no matter how diverse the population is. <laughs> uh, I think our concerns are everyone's concerns, and that crosses political ideology, that crosses uh, cultural uh, spectrum. I, I think that's the role of government, to preserve people's rights and to make sure that uh, we protect the public good. Uh, what do you see as the role of state government in meeting the needs of the increasingly diverse population of the state of Tennessee? Well, um, I'm going to answer it this way. Um, the, the 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 population is uh, is increasingly diverse, but we're one state. So I think that if we can meet the needs of all of the citizens of this state, then um, uh, I feel like the the the, the diversity that's uh, emerging will. Um, they, that, that everyone will be covered in that way. So I don't want to isolate uh, one group from another because uh, I, I feel like we need to look, uh, look for um, ways to serve everyone. Yes. Um, what do you think the state's role should be in K-12 education? Okay, yeah, so I, I think I addressed this earlier. Um, I feel like we, we need to try to improve um, the, 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 uh, the academic functioning of our, of our, of our, our, our children. And so I, I mentioned this earlier, I feel like we could introduce uh, some of these harder math classes earlier. Uh, say, for example, we could introduce uh, pre-algebra earlier, maybe in the fifth grade, uh, and we could introduce we could introduce algebra. And I, I think if we introduce these subjects earlier, that we'll get better test scores, especially in math, where I think we tend to fall down. Additionally, I think that we should uh, up the reading, um, that we should encourage reading, um, and 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 make that an integral part of any uh, of of a curriculum. I've often thought maybe. Uh, uh, the students could spend an hour a day uh, just reading. Northcutt, uh, what do you think the state's role should be in K-12 education? I think the state should have quite a big role in uh, K through 12 education. I think that a good quality public education is probably the backbone of opportunity that crosses every spectrum. I think it's vital that we have a well-educated populace, and a lot of what the state can do to engender that is to fully fund our uh, education programs, to make sure that our teachers are well paid so that we retain good teachers, and to rely less on, uh, on testing and make sure that we adequately fund our arts programs, our libraries, and our classrooms. That, I think, is vital. The state can do quite a lot to help all of our schools because a, each student, no matter what their zip code in, is, should have the same quality education. Um, 
Ms. Northcutt, uh, how has your experience prepared you for this job? <laughs> um, I think my life has prepared me for this job. <laughs> um, I don't have to imagine the concerns of the people of this district because I live those same concerns. When I'm out knocking door to door, I ask people, what are your concerns? What are the issues that you think need to be addressed? And I listen to them. And for the most part, they're the same as the issues that I've dealt with as a single mother, as a former small business owner, as a working mother, as someone who drives on I-24 daily and uh, sees the consequence of our area's wonderful growth. Um, I, I live that every day, and that's prepared me to address the concerns of everyone in this district. Ms. Smith? How has your experience prepared you for this job? Well, um, like Ms. Ms. Northcutt, I'm a mom as well. And I believe that that, that job will prepare, prepare you for just about any, any job. <laughs> but um, uh, prior, you know, prior to becoming a mom, I, I did work. Um, I worked in Washington, D.C. for a congressman. Um, and um, I also, I have a journalism background, so I work for a newspaper. Um, and I guess the biggest experience that I have is um, I was a public defender. I represented a number of people. I was taking phone calls all the time, or I was in court uh, handling cases, trying cases, pleading cases out. So I feel like, uh, and, and also writing appeals and studying the law, and so I feel like that experience in and of itself of, of, of working in the law uh, prepares me to, um, uh, to serve in the legislature. Uh, Ms. Smith? Um, what do you think is the number one issue facing the state of Tennessee in the next five years? And how would you address that issue? Okay, so as a public defender, uh, when I was, in, and I was a public defender in St. Louis County, uh, just for clarification. So when you're, when you're working in that line of work, you see a lot of the problems that people are facing. And, and so uh, drugs, I wanna say, um, uh, the opioid uh, crisis, I, I believe that that is severely impacting families and, and people don't know what to do, they, they don't know where to turn. And so uh, I think that I'd like to see us try to, to do something to uh, combat uh, the drug problem that we have really in the nation and, um, uh, and, and make laws that that uh, that can help people get the drug help that they need, uh, maybe in, in in some type of uh, uh, facility, uh, uh, you know, so that they can really readily get help for drug problems. Uh, Ms. Northcutt, uh, what do you think is the number one issue facing the state of Tennessee in the next five years, and how would you address that issue? Um, uh, I, I really think that uh, health care access and the impact that that has on lives and on the closing of hospitals, uh, as well as on the opioid epidemic, uh, frankly, uh, I think we need to expand Medicaid and make mental health care available, uh, make uh, treatment available for people who are addicted so they don't just end up in our prison system um, and make make health insurance available to people the something like 320,000 Tennesseans who aren't covered uh, so that the hospitals that are closing won't have as many uninsured patients. That's the reason we're losing them. And that's, that's vital to the communities and the counties that they serve. And it puts more of a strain on the open hospitals in the adjoining counties. I think this is going to be like dominoes. The more hospitals that close. Ms. Northcutt, um, 
Would you be willing to set aside party loyalty to accomplish one of your priorities? Of course. I am willing to set aside partisan politics to accomplish every priority. <laughs> I do strongly believe that we have become way too partisan, too polarized, and what we need to do is find a way to bridge that gap and speak to each other because our concerns are the same concerns no matter what the letter after your name is, whether it's an R or a D or an I, we have the same issues. And the only way we can solve them is to come together. The State Senate is only 33 people. That's a, that requires interpersonal connections. It's the size of a college honors class. And I think if we can bridge that gap and find a way to come to solutions together, the whole state will be better for it, and definitely this 13th district. Uh, would you be willing to set aside party loyalty to accomplish, accomplish one of your priorities? Well, uh, the answer to that is, of course, I, I, I would. Uh, I agree with Republicans on many issues. I agree with Democrats on many issues. But I think when we're in the legislature working together, we, we all need to you know, have a commitment to work together to do what is best for the state of Tennessee. And, and that if, if that means putting aside or, or giving and, and taking uh, on certain issues um, uh, that, that don't corrupt your, your, your values, or, or, uh, then I'm, I'm willing to work with both Democrats and, and Republicans uh, to, to try to make uh, this state stand out, to make this state be the best that it can be. Uh, and this is the last question. Um, you will have two minutes you know, for this question uh, along with closing remarks. Okay. Uh, so Ms. Smith, um, what is your vision for the state of Tennessee in 10 years? Okay. Well, I want to get back to uh, education because I believe that that is the key. Uh, and I would like to see us appropriate the monies that are needed for schools, for teachers, for supplies for kids. Uh, I'd like to see us do the best that we can for the children of the state. And so to that end, um, I, I believe that if we can support the children while they're young, then um, uh, then they'll, they'll, they, they can turn out to be, you know, better adults. So I'd like to see us appropriating monies, uh, uh, not necessarily for testing, but I do believe that there is a place for testing. Uh, when uh, you get to the uh, point where you're thinking about colleges and so forth, uh, you know, that's one of the main things that they're looking at. So that has to be on the on the back burner, or we have to at least look at, at testing uh, 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 for the kids, so um, I'd like to see us make uh, significant improvements, significant gains in, 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 in education. Um, and the way to do this, I think, maybe to, I don't want to say revamp the curriculum, but maybe rethink the curriculum and, and, and maybe look around and see what's working in some other states. But I believe that Tennessee can be, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of emphasis here. There are a lot of colleges here. I believe that Tennessee can be um, one of the, uh, uh, that, that we can move up uh, 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 in the ranks of, uh, of academia mm -hmm. if we just put a few more uh, a little, uh, little steps in place to make, the, make uh, Tennessee better for the children. Northcutt, uh, you have two minutes for this question, and you know, along with your closing remarks, uh, what is your vision for the state of Tennessee in ten years? That's a wonderful uh, concept. My vision for the state of Tennessee in ten years is to manage our incredible growth, especially in Middle Tennessee, uh, to the betterment of all of us. That increases our tax base and that increases what we can do with that money to benefit our citizens. I want to see, I want to see more people with health care access. Uh, I want to see 
a better education system so that we fully fund our schools, we pay our teachers well, and we come up from the low rankings that we've held for too long. Um, I also want to see uh, access, greater access to higher education. Uh, I think that's a wonderful way to lift our state up and to attract better paying jobs. Uh, when we welcome industry into uh, Tennessee, they want to make sure that we have an educated populace. Um, and we need to make sure when we give a tax break to a company to bring jobs here that they offer good paying jobs that pay a living wage and that give people the dignity of self-sufficiency. Um, and I think education is a way to get there as well. I think that um, education is probably the best opportunity we can offer anyone to better their own lives and it's an equalizer. We need to make sure that all schools offer a quality education and that if you work 40 hours a week you can be self-sufficient. Um, in closing, I just want to say I will continue to ask for what a voter's issues and concerns are, even when I'm in Nashville serving, and I will work to better everyone who lives here. Thank you. Once again, on behalf of the League of Women Voters and Rutherford County, I want to thank all the candidates for their participation today. Uh, I also want to recognize Brian Robertson, Director of the Rutherford County Office of Information Technology, and Lee Harris, Communications Manager, for their cooperation in presenting this program on Government Channel 19 and making it available on the county website. I want to encourage all Rutherford County citizens to vote. Early voting begins October 17th and goes through November 1st. Election day is November 6th. Please exercise this important right to determine who will be the next state senator for District 13. May we close with a round of applause for the candidates?